What's up, guys? Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Girlfriend Therapy Podcast. So I am super excited, guys. I want to try and calm down because I have to pace myself first and foremost. Um, but more than that, I'm just excited that we are have finally kicked off this podcast. As you guys know, I'm just going to... I'm So... As you guys know, if you're following me on social media, you already know that we have already decided to, let me try this thing, y'all. We have, um, we have started, you think I would have did this before I got on here, right? Let's see, let's see, let's see. There we go. Um, I can't figure out how to do this. There we go. There we go. So as you guys are, as you guys know, if you're following me on social media, then you would already know that we have decided to start this Girlfriend Therapy podcast, which we call Girlfriend Therapy Sessions. And then today is our first session. So super excited. Um, I don't know why this isn't just doing it, but okay. There we go. So super excited. And I do apologize because one of the things that I am trying to learn in this new year is how to keep it brief, which has been a challenge for me. So I always consider myself a communicator, but how can you consider yourself a communicator if you can't communicate efficiently, effectively, and to the point? Succinctly is the word I was looking for. But nonetheless, welcome to Girlfriend Therapy Podcast. This is our first podcast for not just 2022, but our first podcast under this Girlfriend Therapy Sessions. I'm incredibly excited. If you guys have followed me on any of the social media platforms, then you already know that, um, you know, what, what, what has been birthed entering to this new year of 2022, coming off of almost a two-year stint with COVID and all that it brought with it. Uh, one of the things that, you know, we've kind of birthed out of all of that is Girlfriend Therapy Podcast. So I'm excited. Um, the idea about the podcast, I shared a lot of that content in my videos or in my, uh, in a video, I actually did a video, um, but then also in the uh, message that I sent out. So if you are on the Girlfriend Therapy mailing list, if you're, then you already got the message. But if you're not, just shoot me an email. Let me know if you're interested. Um, the email ad address, my email address is kwanza at girlfriendtherapy.org. Um, so you can shoot me an email. You get added to the list. I don't send a lot of emails out. Um, but I think I will continue to send out just messages around um, the podcast, like when it's released, when the new episodes are released, I'll kind of send out messages with the link to the to the to the post. Um, so that will be one of the things that I'll definitely send out. Um, so let's take a step back. Like I said, we're actually kind of going into 2022, which will kind of mark two years of COVID. And if you guys remember back in 2020. We were scheduled to host our, our our 10th annual girlfriend therapy conference. It was scheduled I think, for like March the 26th or something like that. Uh, COVID ended up hitting like at the top of March, end of February. Um, I mean, like really hitting. And um, they started locking things down, shutting things down, canceling a whole lot of in-person events, you know, minimizing the number of gather or people that can be in one gathering. So there was a lot of stuff that was going on with regards to that. And so as a result, we ended up having to cancel our 10th annual Girlfriend Therapy Conference. Interestingly enough, the theme for that conference was use all your bricks to build, which was, a you know, this, this idea, this concept, this thing that I say often, which is use all your bricks to build. And so that was kind of the theme for the 2020 conference, uh, which, was, which was our 10th annual, con annual conference. And the theme or the idea behind that was that we all have gifts, we all have talents, we all have, uh, you know, things to offer. And so using all of that to continue to build in this lifetime is kind of the theme behind that. And so as we went into, you know, cancel the conference in 2020, I was kind of sitting on like, okay, what do I do next? Like, what do we do with the ministry? Because as you guys know, everything that we do under the ministry was like, you know, was, was personal, right? Um, there was nothing that we were doing virtually, like, you know, some people, some ministries do like Bible studies and different things like that. I wasn't doing anything virtually. Um, and then, and then, although there were things that I had been thinking about 
prior to the pandemic, I wasn't really in a position to do those things um, when the pandemic hit because I hadn't did the planning that I needed to do um, in order to do those things. So, and they were still just ideas. There wasn't anything that was concrete. So uh, fast forward going through the pandemic, <clears throat> I really didn't know what to do with Girlfriend Therapy Ministry. Um, again, everything we did was for, was public facing. And so, although a lot of you know ministries and stuff had, all t had taken on and picked up a uh, virtual platform, I just hadn't done that for Girlfriend Therapy. And there was a couple of reasons why, if I'm really being honest. Um, I think the first year, 2020 with the pandemic, I kind of took that as a time for respite. You know, um, we had, like I said, was going into our 10th year. Um, I have been, you know, a little exhausted, a little tired. I talk a lot about a lot about that in my book, which I released that same year. Um, uh, my third book, Reflections of a Life Well Lived, which is kind of a book of memoirs. It's like essays, um, uh, stories, essays, antidotes and nuggets. So there's little essays and, uh, you know, nuggets and such from my life that I kind of packaged into a book with some life lessons and shared that. Um, I wish I had a copy of it in front of me, but I don't. Um, in any case, you can go to the website. You can see all that stuff. But in any case, um, you know, had, you know, come into our 10th year, had been a little tired. So I really took that 2020 as a time to rest, not just rest from ministry stuff, but take a rest from everything that I was able to take a rest from. For example, um, my job, we ended up having to work not necessarily remotely, but we were kind of shut down and there wasn't very much work that I could do remotely. And so kind of took advantage of that time to do some of the other things that I had planned and wanted to do. So some of the fun stuff that I got to do during the pandemic was um, uh, I wrote two parables. I always wanted to write a parable. So I did end up writing two during a pandemic. Um, and I kind of posted those on our blog. Uh, what else did I do during a pandemic? I created uh, a children's book. I wrote and illustrated a children's book. That was a lot of fun. That was something that I always dreamed of doing. Uh, in addition to creating or illustrating and writing the children's book, I actually created a gang of children um, uh, uh, illustrations or characters, rather. Um, I, I think it's about seven characters, maybe seven or eight characters that I created. Um, they're children characters. And the purpose of those characters was to create like a series of children's books, which is something that still I want to do and I'm sure I'll get back to. Um, but for right now, I created the characters. I registered the characters. So they are my characters by name and color and all that wonderful stuff and image and likeness. Um, so that's another thing that I got to do. Um, in addition to those children's characters, I actually also created some adult characters and they're actually on the back of my laptop. I don't know if I can, this is the good thing about kind of doing my own thing because I can get really creative and at least try to show you guys see these characters. Can't see all of them, but uh, those are a few of the characters that I created. Um, I actually created seven of them. And these are adult characters that I created for the purpose of. Um, so I wrote this, I wrote this, this, this story, if you will, probably about five years ago. And I'm not going to give you the background of it because I'm still, I, I haven't produced it yet. Um, but I wrote this story and I wanted to create the characters to match up and line up with the story. And so I created these seven adult characters that line up with the characters in the story. And, you know, at first I thought to maybe just do it as a um, an animation, like kind of do a cartoon. Um, I thought to do it as a um, uh, as a play. So I think that my initial thought was to do it as a play. And my daughter, who went to... Uh, um, you know, in, in undergrad, she actually studied theater. Well, she didn't study theater. She was a part of the theater team. She was actually in school for psychology, but she was on the theater, you know, she was uh, a part of the, I don't know what the theater group is, but she was a part of the theater group for her undergraduate uh, school. And so one of the ideas was to have, um, you know, her team or not her team, but her, her teammates rather, um, kind of participate in that, you know, or not participate, I'm sorry, uh, kind of have her teammates um, or her theater <laughs> buddies um, play a part in, you know, or, or or do the play. However, I'm trying to say this, do the play. Um, let me see. Sorry, guys. Um, where was I? So, yeah, so the initial thought was to have my daughter and her, the other members of her, like her theater, to produce the play and let them play the characters. That was the next thought, to do it kind of like as a play. Um, 
And then, you know, once we got into the pandemic, and so I didn't do that because I didn't get it, uh, didn't get it in front of them in advance enough time. And it was like during their senior year and everybody was super busy. So that never happened. But then once we got into the pandemic and we had a little bit of time, I had this bright idea that maybe I can do it as a movie short, like a, a um, like a uh, cartoon, if you will. And that's still kind of the back of my mind. That's still one of the things I want to do. But in order to do that, I had to learn how I had to learn cartooning, which is something that I didn't know how to do. And although I've kind of dabbled in a little bit, I'm not as good. I'm not good enough to create. Like that's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun, like just learning animation, digital animation. But it's a lot of work. So, um, you know, haven't gotten around to that. But nonetheless, I created the characters. Uh, I'm excited about the characters. I'm excited about the possibilities with those characters. But right now they're kind of sitting on the side. In addition to that. <laughs> I actually created another character that I absolutely love, and I uh, her name is Dr. Lexi, and uh, she is a character who uh, her, her her whole thing is all about language and words, which, as you guys may or may not know, I'm actually working on my PhD. The PhD is in communication. There's a focus on well, not in communications. My PhD is a P, a general PhD in philosophy, and it is or general humanities rather, and uh, my focus specifically is rhetoric, and so. If you know anything, my background is in communications. I was trying to identify with something that was as closely linked to communications as possible. And rhetoric was the thing that, that kind of registered for me. So uh, Dr. Lexi is a character that I created that I want to create like a cartoon um, behind. Well, not necessarily a cartoon behind. What is the thing called? A um, comic strip behind. So that's another idea that I have that's kind of sitting on the back burner. But nonetheless, during a pandemic, I got to create and do all of these things. So there was this really incredible phase during a pan pandemic where I got had time and had an opportunity to just express myself creatively. And of course, you guys know I continue to paint and draw and um, all that, you know, all the other fun creative stuff. So, oh, and, and also <laughs> along those same lines, I actually... Um, illustrated in adult coloring books. So those were a lot of the projects that I did. And then on top of that, as you guys know, I have finished my third book um, at the top of 2020. And I actually had my book release on February the 29th, which I thought was really cool. Um, I had the book release on February the 29th. And then, you know, everything else kind of went into the pandemic after that. So one of the things I realized, um, so I kind of went from the space during the pandemic of having a high level of creative energy to like this dark cloud. Um, because of course, during, during all this time, you know, you, we're not really sure what's happening. The news is inundating you with all of this pandemic conversation. And although I don't watch the news, you know, you're still on social media and different platforms like that. And it, that's all anybody has to talk about. Everybody has something to say. And it was a little exhausting to say the least. So I, like probably most of you, um, have really become kind of over it and exhausted with the whole conversation and exhausted with all of it, uh, particularly as we started uh, kind of going into the holiday season where families weren't really able to get together and wasn't right, you know, really sure what was going on. You know, there was the hopes that the pandemic, that COVID would have died down. And you know, there was talks of vaccination, all this other stuff that was happening. Then we rolled out of 2020 into 2021. And then you're still kind of, you know, not quite sure what's going on with regards to the pandemic. And so that dark cloud is still kind of hovering because all of this talk and all of this craziness with the pandemic and not to mention George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all the police brutality and all of the racial you know, tension and civil unrest and political craziness and pandemic man mayhem and all of this stuff going on. And this little dark cloud continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger and darker and darker and darker, but it was still hovering. And then on January the 9th, two days from today in 2021, my mom passed. And that dark cloud that was, you know, hovering all of a sudden just like fell on me like bricks, uh, fell heavy on me. And the world just went dark. And it was dark for some time. And so needless to say, I wasn't thinking about girlfriend therapy ministry or thinking about anything. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just trying to live, breathe day by day, 
um, just taking it one day at a time, trying to keep my head above water, trying to just get out the bed every day, wake up every day. And it wasn't necessarily a depression, but it was, I was very much down. Like I was very much down. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I explained it like, you know, when my mom passed, I explained it like there was like this light switch that somebody just clicked off, like the light was on and then it wasn't. And that's kind of how I felt like there was this light switch that went off and I was like in darkness for several months. So needless to say, I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just trying to survive. Um, during that time, I also started a new uh, work role in my company. That was pretty demanding. It was a lot of work there. Uh, the only good thing about that one is, you know, starting a new job and you have to learn a new job and there's, you know, quite a bit of pressure there. Um, there's a demand for your time, your attention, you know, for you to actually do work in that space. Right. Um, so having the demands of my job and then also still working my Ph.D. program, um, having those two demands kind of pulled me outside of myself. And so I wasn't able to really just kind of sink into what probably could have been a real full blown depression um, just because of everything else that was going on. So fortunately, I still had my job I had to attend to, still had uh, my PhD program I still had to attend to. Um, and those were, that was enough. That was enough balance to uh, kind of be in and out of myself, right? Uh, so fast forward, vaccine comes on the scene. People are getting the vaccine, but they're still getting COVID. People are not getting the vaccine and they're not getting COVID. People still getting the vaccine, still getting COVID, still dying. From, we're still in the same conundrum <laughs> that we were in back in 2020. So nothing seemed to have changed. And then there was still a lot more conversation and stuff around it. So fast forward, you know, 2021 was a little more the same of 2020. Uh, fast forward, we're coming to the end of the year. Usually my birthday is in October. Usually around my birthday, I kind of take time and start really reflecting, kind of thinking about, the, you know, the years that, you know, the, what, what I've accomplished during the year, thinking about where I'm going, you know, just a, a time of reflection for me. And this was a big birthday for me. I actually turned a big 5-0 during my birthday in 2020. And so that was kind of, you know, different, trying to figure out, okay, what does that mean, right? Um, and where do I go? For, like, you know, did I accomplish enough? Do I, like, you know, what does this really mean, you know? Um, so this was a really, a really time, an important time, I think, for me to kind of really reflect. And so uh, Babe and I actually took some time off. We went to um, the beach like we usually do every year and, you know, really just took some time to reflect and to think. And it was during that time that I think I kind of started digging out of this space that I was in. Not to mention, um, I had already been seeing my therapist. I started seeing my therapist like back in, I think the fall of 2019, I had already started seeing my therapist. So when all this stuff was happening, I was already back in therapy. Um, and so when my mom passed, I was already still in therapy. Um, and I think I went to her for a couple more sessions until probably around maybe March or so of 2021 is when I stopped. But needless to say, now we fast forward end of 2021 in October, start climbing myself out of this little um, dark space that I had been in. And um, and then just start kind of thinking about what's next, you know, uh, thinking about what's the next phase of my life going to look like? What what is, you know, my life look like on the other side of this PhD program? Uh, what are some of the things that I still want to accomplish? You know, are there things that, you know, that I, 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 I've thought to accomplish, but now I maybe feel like they've been overcome by events and overcome by time, you know, are there things that I need to bring into this new season with me or things that I need to say goodbye to? Um, are there things that I've always wanted to do that's still kind of on the table and time and age and all that stuff is not a factor. So kind of did a lot of research or a lot of, um, uh, 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 what is the word? Just a lot of thinking in that space. Um, so then we get to towards the end of the year and I'm talking to the Holy Spirit, just really kind of trying to figure out what I need to do. And, um, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people had started, uh, virtual stuff, but I, I didn't want to do anything virtual because I just, I didn't want to, one, I didn't want to do anything just for the sake of doing anything. Um, and two, I didn't want to, uh, really invest in this virtual platform when I really wasn't sure what it meant for the long term. Um, 
and again, like I talked about, I just, I, I wanted to take that time to rest. Um, and so it, it, with that regard, I kind of took it as a sign to just kind of rest on some growth and therapy stuff because it was really demanding. Um, but then, you know, coming to the end of the year, just kind of talking in the Holy Spirit, trying to figure out what's next. And, um, you know, I, I, I was getting the sense of something that doesn't require a lot of my energy. Um, something that's not a really real heavy lift that I can do and not feel overwhelmed or exhausted or like feel like I'm pouring way too much of myself into something. Um, something that, you know, could still be engaging and that I can kind of do, you know, at a time that it, like in my own space. Right. Um, but still be engaging with the women who have followed this ministry, who have supported this ministry. M mind you, meanwhile, you know, I'm still getting people, there are people who have uh, monthly investments into this ministry. So you're still getting people that's sewing into the ministry and all the, the money that's being sold into the ministry, it goes to the ministry account where some of the, you know, the back office uh, kind of cost comes out of that same account. For example, website, you know, management type stuff. Um, P.O. box management type stuff, uh, you know, just all of, all of the back office stuff that's needed, um, like the phone line, all the back office stuff that's needed to, uh, to all the back office business stuff that's needed to keep the business going. So everything is still in place to keep the business going. We just weren't doing any of the services or the activities that we typically would do throughout the year because, again, everything was like face to face. So. Um, yeah, so people are still sewing into the ministry and I'm kind of starting to feel like, okay, I have to do something. Like I really, not only do I have to do something, but I really want to do something. I want to kind of get back into that space. And so uh, the podcast was the thing that really just kind of set in my heart. Um, and it was something that I felt like I can do at my own pace. But again, it, I, I didn't want it to feel like the radio. If you guys remember doing Girlfriend Therapy Radio where it was predominantly me every week doing a broadcast. Um, I sometimes get tired of hearing myself talk. Um, so I, I thought that, you know, if I take a step back, um, and mind you, we started, we, during the pandemic, I was actually working with my web designer and she was making updates to the website. And so there was some, some stuff that God was downloading to me with regards to that, with regards to the website, um, specifically the sisterhoodness of it all, right? Um, the individualness of it all, <laughs> um, elevating the platform or elevating the values or the tenets, if you will. So if you guys remember in the early stages of girlfriend therapy ministry or girlfriend therapy, um, the tenets were uh, encourage, empower, um, uh, educate, encourage, empower, educate. Encourage, empower, ed yeah, those were the, the tenets. Um, and now looking at it from a different vantage point, it is encourage, empower, educate, esteem, and edify. And the esteem and edify part is really like that individual's part. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, um, but it really is about like the individual woman. And so if I'm, it, it's almost like, it's not, where, whereas everything else was like this on this larger group platform, I think this is more about just that kind of one-on-one. -on -one which is, believe it or not, where I'm most comfortable. I mean, I'm com I'm most comfortable with one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm more comfortable, rather, with one-on-one -on -one than I am in any other setting. So if I'm doing like, so it, it goes from being comfortable one-on-one -on -one and then being comfortable in like a big conference setting. And then anything in between that, I usually tend to get a feel a little more um, introverted. And, and so, you know, that's kind of a different space to kind of work from. Um, but I knew that I wanted to do something that kind of, you know, um, cater to that one-on-one -on -one kind of feel a little bit more. And so I could have done a radio with the guests, and, you know, but I just felt like, you know, engaging with you guys, being able, you guys being able to look at my face and look at the guests and, and you know, kind of having that more kind of engagement would be more exciting. And then one of my favorite things to do is just getting to know new women and talking to, well, getting to know new people in general, but getting to know new women specifically, because I love to hear people's stories. And I actually closed out my, the last chapter in my book, Reflections of a Life Well Lived, is the last chapter is tell yourself your story. And, and there's just the thought behind that is that 
all of us have a story. We all have come from somewhere. We're all going somewhere. We all have wisdom that we can share or knowledge that we could share or impart in others. Um, and so I wanted to create a space where we can do that. So where I can have a conversation with another woman and just really learning about her, learning about what makes them tick, learning about the things that they inspire to do, the things that they have embarked on doing, the things that uh, give them joy, the things that they're afraid of, the things that, um, you know, that they're passionate about, you know, the, the, their purpose, like all of that stuff, just having like these conversations where you guys, the listeners, get to not only participate because, you know, I invite everybody to say, if you, I invite everybody to be a part of this platform. And and the purpose of it, you know, I share what the foundation scripture is and some of my earlier talks about the, the uh, podcast and what the foundation scripture kind of comes from Romans 12 and 11 or Romans, Revelations rather, 12 and 11, where we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony and really hanging on to the words of our testimony, which is the part that we play in overcoming the enemy. Um, and so when we share and we talk and we just have these conversations, these real life you know, real time kind of conversations, the idea is that the listener or the viewer will kind of hear someone's testimony or someone's story and say, oh, you did that. I, I can do that. Oh, you overcame that. I can overcome that. Oh, that's how you approach that. Oh, maybe I can implement those actions or those activities or those steps or whatever it is and apply that to my situation and be an overcomer in that way as well. So that's really is the goal of it. That's really the idea of it. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to just kind of see what this year has to offer. You know, we have 52 weeks in the year. So I have 52, you know, uh, shows that I need to get guests for. And so, um, you know, I'm excited and hopeful um, that, you know, we will have the right guests at the right time. The interesting thing is when I did the, the conference, everything that we do under this ministry is really interesting because you do a conference, for example, and you're planning for X number of attendees. and Early on, you know, you would have that worry or I would have that worry, like, what if nobody shows up or who's going to be there? What are, you know, I would kind of go through that whole thing. But I really learned early on in the ministry that, you know, I, I, I'm just a vessel. I show up. I create the space that God has, you know, called me to create this podcast being one of them. And the people that come on are the people that are supposed to be there at the appropriate time. Um, I send for sure the invitations out and still have quite a few individuals in mind that I, I think would be amazing um, to just have a conversation with, because these are women that I typically have had conversations with, whether they're long conversations or short conversations, but just women that I know who I, I think have um, has some really cool stuff to share and stuff that we all can learn from and we all can grow from. So that's what this platform is about. Um, and I wanted to kick this first show off, one, to kind of give you guys a sense of where I've been where I've come from, um, and I can I can say without hesitation that I am different on this side of the pandemic. Um, I am different than I was in you know March of 2020 going into the pandemic. Um, I'm different in some ways that's good, in some ways that's not so good. Um, I think some of the not so good ways is I'm very much more insecure about a lot of things um, than I had been, you know, going into the pandemic. Um, and some things, you know, superficial things, but some things are kind of deeper and deep rooted. And so I am hopeful that during these conversations that I have with these amazing women over the next 52 weeks, I'm hopeful that I will learn and I will grow and I will be healed and I will find deliverance and I will find uh, inspiration and aspiration and all that wonderful stuff through these conversations just as much as anybody else will. Um, and really the idea is just to, you know, is to learn and glean from one another. So I'm super excited about that. I'm excited about the space that's being created um, and excited about what this year has to offer. Um, and, you know, maybe as the conversation goes on, you know, I can probably share in more detail um, some of the things that I find myself insecure about. Uh, like it, it, I'll, I'll even say, for example, um, something that I'm majorly insecure about right now is this podcast. 
Um, sometimes I kind of think that there are a million people already doing stuff. Why do people want to hear girlfriend therapy? What do we have to offer? What do we have to offer that's different? And I really can't worry about any of that stuff. Um, and, but, but there's still this like insecurity there that, um, you know, that I wonder, is this going to be successful? Um, and I think more than, so when I, when I, I say, is it going to be successful? But I think more than being successful, is it going to be purposeful? Um, and then I hope that the, uh, the 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 demand for that purpose, right? I, I, I place that demand on God for him to work through the hearts and the minds and the mouths of those women who will come and be a part of this platform. And also through me, as I continue to lead, you know, uh, the conversations through this platform, that it may be a blessing, not just to myself, but to everybody that listens to it. So I'm excited. I think 2022 is going to be a great year for girlfriend therapy. Um, and I think as you engage with this ministry, I pray that it's going to connect with you in a way that will be impactful um, to your lives as well. If you are interested in being a part of this platform, you know, being a guest, and this is for women from all walks of life, all ages, all kinds of backgrounds. Um, I just want us to create a space to, to dialogue, right? Um, and to get some understanding and to grow from one another and to heal from one another and to be strengthened by one another. I just want to create that space for that. So if you, you know, want to be a part of this, this, this platform, you want to be a guest, I would love to have you. Um, again, you can shoot me an email, Kwanzaa at girlfriendtherapy.org. Uh, you can message me on any of the social media platforms. Um, but next week we will kick off our second episode with our first guest. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet, but, um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun and I am absolutely looking forward to it. You guys can continue to support us by following us on the social media platform, sharing our content. Um, on, you know, with your friends and your network, um, going to our website, which you guys is www.girlfromtherapy.org, going to our website, checking out some of the content that's there, you know, um, go to our store, purchase some of our products that's still available. Uh, and I just look forward to a great year with you guys. I hope I covered everything. I feel like I'm talking a million miles a minute, but I hope I covered everything. And um, again, I am incredibly excited about, you know, you know, what this year has to offer for us in girlfriend therapy. So I love you guys. Looking, for, looking forward to, um, you know, spending the year with you guys and seeing what we have to offer. Um, so until next week, thank you for tuning in to Girlfriend Therapy Sessions and uh, look forward to, you know, being a blessing to you guys. So until next week, blessings. <laughs>